Hi, I'm Graham, and this is Man V Film. I recently just got out of seeing Ex Machina, which is Alex Garland's directorial debut. He is the writer of the novels uh, The Beach and The Tesseract that were made into future movies. The Beach is a far better novel than the movie, um, and it's really worth reading if you can get your hands on it. Um, he also wrote the scripts for uh, one of the most underrated sci fi classics of recent memory, which is Sunshine. He wrote the script for 28 Days Later. He also wrote the script for Dread, a woefully underappreciated movie that should have did far better than it ever did. Now, Ex Machina stars Don Hal Gleason as Caleb, a mid-range programmer for this company called Blue Book. He wins a raffle or competition to go and spend a week living with the reclusive genius of the company, the owner, and that is played by Oscar Isaac as Nathan. So what happens is, is in the main plot of the story, is Caleb flies out to this reclusive place in the middle of a, a sort of tropical island or wherever it's set and spends a week with Oscar Isaac's Nathan. It's not just a plain competition, Nathan has got a person there to administer a test. This test is a Turing test. It tells you throughout the movie what that actually is. It's a, a test where a, a human sits down with some sort of artificial intelligence and by the end of the conversation decides whether it's actually talking to a robot or whether it's talking to something that has a sentient you know, mind. In this case, the sentient mind is a cyborg robot called Ava, played by Alicia Vikander. So this is basically your three main characters to the plot. They're in the house and it's just a sort of twisting thriller, darkly humorous tale about this machine, the genius and the programmer. And that is it. But you're never quite sure what each people's motivations are and that leads to sort of like a, quite a good mystery. You're always wondering what they're going to do, who's doing what, who's outsmarting who, you know. Um, and the, the, the movie itself actually treats Ava as a fully fledged character and that comes across quite well. You're never quite sure. I mean, y you can see that she's a robot, but she comes across as a human person. But you're never sure if she's mimicking that, if she's just using things that she's learned to pretend to manipulate people to get what she wants. Because each person in this tale wants something specific and they're all trying to twist it towards their way. Now, there's the great things about it are the performances. Um, the three lead characters are perfectly cast and they give superb performances, especially Oscar Isaac, who's just, I mean, he's turned up in everything at the moment, but he's knocking out the park and everything as well. Um, you know, it's, he's the genius, but he's a bit wacky, he's a bit off kilter, and, you know, he gives a, a, a great, great role, um, which also involves one of the strangest, but most captivating dance sequences I've ever seen in a movie, and it shouldn't be long in this, but it's just absolutely genius. I wish I could just watch it on loop. Where the problem kind of falls down is, the movie's cold. The movie, you know, it doesn't. It's not really empathetic with the characters. You don't really, you know, you're not sure. But you want when the character you most sympathise with, the one you most want to see him is is actually the robot. Whereas, you know, she's the most human of the three characters, which shouldn't really be that way. Although it's a beautiful location, you don't really see too much of it. Snippets here and there. It's set in this cold, dark, mechanical building. It's just, it's, it's all. There's no natural light. But overall, you, you want to see what happens. Um, it's an interesting movie, it's an interesting experiment within the movie itself and it turns out to be an enjoyable watch. There's only a couple of moments where I kind of felt myself tempted to look at the watch to see what time it was, but you know, it pretty much holds your attention for most of the movie. Is it something you're going to have to see on the big screen? Not necessarily, you could catch it on DVD, Blu-ray, on Netflix, streaming, whatever. But it is something that's worth watching. Um, I'd probably check it out again at some point. So it's a, it's a good, solid debut from that Garland, and I'm really curious to see what he's going to do next because he's uh, seems to be in this playground of sci-fi that it's um, you know really interesting to watch. I'm going to give this movie three and a half stars out of five. Very good, worth a watch. See you next time.